Seville Dojo. Today we're going to be talking about Bunkai, the cat of Cypher. Right, Cypher Bunkai. Right, what we're going to, first of all, what we're going to do is Sensei Brown's going to demonstrate the first six moves of Cypher. And uh, after we've seen his demonstration, we'll talk a little bit about what's going off and some of the possible Bunkai for that move. So, Sensei, can you demonstrate the first six moves in Cypher, please? Initial moves in Kata Cypher, we're going to come in and we're going to grab him. So I've grabbed him at this point here, now he thinks he's going to get a clout. So Sensei Brown, what he's going to do is going to get me off of him. Now he's really good at this. So, first of all, he's going to show you how he'd do it in Kata Cypher using the bunk guy. So, first of all, he's stepped in there, and if you notice, he's folded his elbow in and he's tucked his, his hand into that position just like what we're doing the kata. Now, first of all, he's trapped me, he's actually pulling me against his own waist here, he's trapped me. Now, the next move in the kata is fires back and pulls off. Now, I did let go fairly easy there. This time, I'm not going to let go so, so easy. So, come, on, come along again. I could just smack him on his face, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grab his wrist, because, you know, we all like grabbing wrists, don't we? So, here I go, I'm going to grab his wrist. So, Sensei Brown, again, steps in, moves in on me, and then moves away with his technique, and he's forcing me again off him. Step back in stance, Sensei. I'm going to grab this again one more time. This time, I'm really not going to let go. So, you're going to have to use everything in the kata to your advantage. Ah! Right. Now, what we saw there is I was really, really reluctant to let go. Now, normally, the normal technique of just taking your opponent over to this side of your body is normally enough to release the grip. Now, if the grip wasn't released, like I really, really held on tight there, the next move in the catcher is the arm that comes over, and that works like a prizing action. If you can just put me in this technique again, and see where I actually grabbed it, we'll do this facing the camera. So, we'll grab you from this position here. Go for the most, let's say. So he pulls me in, steps in, steps away. Now I'm still holding at this point, I've still got hold of him, but as soon as Sensei Brown carries out this next move, when the hand comes over and prizes onto mine, and then I get a back fist in my face. So let's just see what's happening with that prizing action and why and how it actually gets me off. So I come in again with a grab. Right, so I step towards him, I pull, I twist, and he keeps hold. If he did it with his other arm, his thumb would be there. But when I prize down, it's his wrist there that's taking in the brunt of the... So it comes up, prizing down. Now I can only take so much of this before I'm really going to have to let go. And once I've let go at this point, the next move in the kata is a nice back fist straight into my face. First of all, I'll drop my elbow down there. <sighs> And then punching down. I'm getting the action of also bring, dropping that elbow down into the arm and striking it in the head nice and fast. Now I'm going to step into him towards him, yeah, so I'm bringing that arm, but as I pull to the side, I'm passing that arm, and then when I grab into this here, I'm bringing into his elbow, bringing him down, just bringing him down to that level where you just strike into wherever you need to strike him. Right, so what you saw there was Sensei Brown actually executed a takedown technique with the elbow. I grabbed him, he pulled me in, the elbow come over, and if we do this at full motion, you'll see that it's a very, very effective takedown technique. So, if we do this at full speed, Sensei. You like right, Sensei? Yep. So that was a very, very good takedown technique that you just saw Sensei Brown there. So, at full speed there, he pulled me in, I made the mistake of grabbing him, he pulled me in, the elbow come over, I'm just going to demonstrate this one of you, so see if you can grab the wrist please. So, I'm grabbing the wrist like this, stepping up and in towards your opponent, not pulling back like this and trying to get away like that, because that's pointless, we're not playing tug of war here. So I like to get in and close, so I can keep my elbow close to my body, because that's where I've got my power, of bringing my arm across like this. <laughs> now if that doesn't already get him off, the prizing action will, but failing that, the elbow that comes across here, which you normally think is just like a back fist to the face, if it cuts an elbow here and it drops onto the shoulder, slight downward pressure on the shoulder, is enough to take anybody down. I <laughs> demonstrate that with the other arm, Sensei. So this time Sensei uses his left arm and he grabs. So yet again, instead of me pulling away and trying to pull this, all I'm going to do is step into him in the position of the cat to pull the arm back. He got off straight away, hold on a bit tight this time, Sensei. Pulls in again, pulls in the arm back, 
So as the elbow comes over like this, it's really simple, just to use that action of getting him straight down onto the floor. Right, so another example of this in the first six moves, the first bit, which is all is about grappling and wrist holding and breaking the holes, etc. So Sensei Brown stood on my right hand side. Yet again he goes and he grabs my wrist. So he's grabbed hold of my right wrist. Do you want to use both hands on this technique, Sensei? So he's got a good double firm hold on this. Now the first thing I'm going to do with this catch is again, I'm going to step in, I'm going to pull the arm over here. Now this time, I'm passing and grabbing this arm, and I'm forcing my elbow behind his elbow into an arm lock here. Now if I were to step round, I could take the Sensei all the way round, we'll do a full 360 degrees for the camera, so you can see that I've got full manipulative control just by putting my elbow into the back of him and keeping his hand here. Now I can use him like a lever and say, come on round again, come on round again. Now if I really needed to then, at this point, because I'm controlling here, if Sensei releases with this one and starts throwing in punches, I've still got control of this arm and this arm, just by using the single arm, and obviously I've still got control here. So from this point here, yet again I can initiate a takedown if I require. Right, let's just say, uh, the first few moves of this cat are getting out of a grab from somebody grabbing your wrist. Now, I don't know how everybody else feels about this, but wrist grabbing when it comes to fighting, very rarely happens. It always happens in demonstrations. Everybody likes to show you the demonstration from the wrist grab. But if we were really going to go in and let's just say I'm wanting to fight him for some reason, let's just say he's been disrespecting my mother or any other excuse where I really want to go in and lamp him, the last thing I want to do is grab him at the wrist. I mean, why would I want to waste my time grabbing him at the wrist when I could go straight for the throat, straight for the head, straight across the jaw? I'm not going to want to grab the wrist, but everybody teaches and demonstrates and kind of expects to go. So we're going to go through the motions and we're going to grab the wrist. Now, in this kata, the technique requires that once this wrist lock, once I've grabbed this wrist, for him to carry out this technique properly, there's got to be a level of closeness involved. Like I say, already with Cypher and with most Goju things, everything's compact, elbows are in, and most of the techniques are done on the inside, close to the body. Now, if I'm just going to grab Sensei Brown here, and let's just say I want to pull him over here so that I can hit him. I'm not going to do him no favours. I'm not going to get close to him. If you notice here, I've got this big distance here of at least a metre in between us. I don't want to be stepping here so I can get kicked, punched or whatever. I want him here so that I can pull him over and punch him when I decide that that's going to be the technique. Now, Sensei Brown, to break out this technique, he knows he's got to close his gap. So it's very important when he steps to bridge the gap himself. If he just... If you just stepped in without getting close, Sensei, and see what happens. If you just go into the technique from there without getting close to me, he can't do it. He goes into that position there and I'll just yank his arm back out. Now, if he steps in close and does the exact same technique and pulls his arm in, I can't get this arm out. I can't get it back out. So he's a lot more stronger and rigid when he's close to me and he's tucked in like this against his body. So that is the reason why he has to bridge the gap and come close. Right, so always in middle of the dojo, we try and get away from the traditional thing. So we've already seen the previous examples, just by grabbing the wrist, that's how everybody else teaches his kata. So I'm going to come in angry and I'm going to grab him and say, right you, I'm going to punch your face in. So I've got this fist here lined up, ready to plow into him. But the first thing he's going to do, as always in the kata, is going to step in and get himself into the position. So he steps in. First thing he does is strike me straight into the side of the abdomen with the Nukate spear strike. Now the Nukate hand goes in, it's not very pleasant, so he's got that prize in first of all. But I'm still here, I've still got a tight grip on him, I'm still going to punch him. So the next move in the cater is, he steps out and he uses his elbow to strike into the arm. Do that with some infliction, Sensei. Now that's just got me off, that's not very nice. That's all well and done, job done. But I'm going to put myself through the pain threshold. We just go back again, and see if I can stance. And this time I'm not going to let off. You're going to have to fire a dart and elbow and that to get me off, pal. Because I'm raging this time, and I'm going to punch your lights out. So the nukate comes in, the elbow strike comes in, he's got me off, but I've got back hold again. I'm still here, so what's the next move in the kata sensei? He's going to come over with the arm, he's going to start prising this arm down, and as he starts prising, he's going to go up into the jaw with his back fist, and he's going to prise me away. So that one comes down, that one comes down, that one comes up, and now we've got this prize in action going on, but I can't get close to him. This is not nice, he's got me wrapped up. Now the next move in the kata, the sensei will step round, is release, I've had to release the grip at this point, he's got on my hand, he's prizing me, and now I can't do anything but prepare to get launched, because as he steps across with this move now, I'm in a lot of trouble. So 
I've gone in, grabbed him by the scruff of the neck, I'm just about to plough into him here, but as soon as he sees his fist coming in, he steps straight in, nuke it takes space, straight into the side wall of my abdomen. Now then, as soon as he steps out, elbow strike into the arm, ow, enough to release me. Next move in the cutter, arm comes over, prizes down and grabs. He grabs me there as the back fist comes out, forces it into my face, he then racks me up and stretches me before stepping up and around into the next move of the kata, going into position again, when he fires out his arms to the right hand side, I'm thrown across the dojo. Thank you Sensei. Right, so I'm going to look at moves 7 and 8 now in Scythe, we've done 1 to 6, we'll look at 7 and 8. So Sensei Brown is in move 6 position there, he's going to move into move 7 and move 8 in Scythe please Sensei. Right, so I'm going to come in with this front kick, so as soon as I come in with the front kick, Sensei Brown steps some blocks, using the hand, then I'm going to come in and fire a punch, again blocks, the next move in the kata. Pulls me down into the knee strike, kicks me away. <laughs> right, so you've already seen the khaki, okay, you used to stop a punch. Now, this time I'm going to punch first and I'm going to kick second, or I'm going to try to. So, as I come in with a punch, Sensei Brown stops that down with the palm heel. Now, I'm going to come in with a front kick. Now, before I get a chance to execute the front kick, the knee goes up, he scoops me. Now, I'm in a very dangerous position from here because he's going to. Knee strike straight into a vital area in there, and obviously he's missing the groin on purpose, but it could go straight into my nads here, and that wouldn't be very nice at all. Now, as he steps across, I'm really at his peril there because as he steps across, he's already got the hand behind me. The knee strike in. down nice and slow. First things first, I'm going to come in with a front kick at Sensei Brown. So the front kick comes in, he stops out with his knee and kicks himself straight up there into his stomach there. Well, that's not very pleasant, so I start dipping. But then I think, sod this, I'm going to be really coming in and clobbering now. So the punch comes into clobbering, straight there with the Juju K block. He blocks that, now as soon as he's blocked, he counter strikes. Thank you, Sensei. So as soon as I grabbed him, the cap UK comes, takes me off straight away, falling straight in by the front kick. So he's kicked me. I'm not very happy about that. Gone in, grabbed him, he's released me all, he's kicked me. So I'll go back for some more with some vengeance. As I approach him, Juju UK straight to the throat, and then he stopped me there at the throat, pulled his arms back, and fired out the Marotti UK strike. So basically, I'm going to come along, grab him, he's going to use the cap UK, the inside eye toe if you like, to get me off. He's then going to kick me away with a front kick. If I come back then, I'm going to get really agitated in this space. The Juju Cakes block, followed by the Marotizuki punch. So, Sensei Brown, you son of a... Thank you, Sensei. Right, so you've just seen a couple of examples of the bunk after moves 8 and 9. Now we're going to move quickly on to 9, 10 and 11. Sensei, can you demonstrate moves 9, 10 11 from Cypher, please? Right, so there's a couple of ways how we can build a bunk out for this bit. The first bit, we're going to use a, a traditional grappling sequence. So, we're both grappling here from this upper position and we're fighting this way off here. Now, straight away, with the move in this cat, I'm going to put my arms up through the middle of the Sensei Brown. So, up in the middle. Now, I'm going to come round, I'm going to make that circular motion. The left hand opens. As I come round like this and fire both of his arms together here, he's in a little bit of pain. We've smacked his arms together. Now, the next move in the cat, as I step across, and bear in mind that I've grabbed him at this point here with his hand, I've just took hold of a little grab. Now as I step across, and the next move will be to fire out in that direction, that's initiating the throw, over there. Yeah, again, from a grappling position. Here we go, it's very important he gets on the inside, if you're on the outside it won't work. So I'm we're grappling here with biting time, he gets on the outside, he brings my arms together, he's got to grab hold of one of them, and as he steps across... Very nice throw, thank you. 
Right, so we've already previously talked about how good control is of somebody if you manage to get over the head. If you manipulate somebody's head, you can initiate plenty of takedowns and you can control an attacker. Now, with Cypher, let's just say, I'm going to use Sensei Brown to demonstrate this. Now, Sensei Brown, if you approach me viciously, please, so he steps in and I'm going to go with the Juju K up to the neck like this, just like what they do in the kata. And then the arms pull back in and the Watizuki will fire out. So once that fires out down there, I've then got his head. I'd like to keep his head down here so the left hand would open. And this one comes down and clouts him on the head or on the, heel, or on the ear like that. Now from this position, we'd step across. Instead of initiating a throw where I'm taking over the leg, I'm actually going to keep the manipulation and twist his head. As I twist his head, he will go with it. He's got to go with it, otherwise his neck can snap. Hey, you, what do you think you play? Hey, what's this about? Hey, punk, you! Right, so moving on then with this Cypher Bunkai demonstration. Sensei Brown, can you show us moves 13 and 14 of the cat, please? Right, so I'm going to show you a couple of examples of what could be going off in this next move. If I get Sensei Brown to put his back to me and I'm going to play the, uh, the dirty attacker that comes in from behind. So there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, I'm going to go for the shoulder grab. So if I place my hand on his shoulder there, Sensei Brown does the next move with the cat, please. He wants onto my hand, takes it over his head, pulls down there, there should have been a key eye in there, Sensei. Aye! And then a short punch to my kidneys. Ah, thank you very much. So now let's have a look at this uh, exact same move when somebody comes along and grabs their hair. So let's just say, I mean, I've got much hair, Sensei Brown, and I've, is, I've obviously got practically none at all. Which is good, really, because nobody's going to come and grab either of our hair, really. I mean, I can put my hand on his head, but I can't really grab his hair, there's no to grab hold of. Unlike the Japanese, that seem to have the tendencies of growing a lot more, you know, a lot more hair. So that's probably where this bunk hair comes from. But let's just go for the pretend hair grab. So he hands over the top of the head, he's going to use his technique just to simply come round and release. Now obviously if my hand's there, as he comes round with this one, it knocks it off, it's enough to knock off. So that's what the traditional bunk suggests. suggest. Right, so this time again, sneaking up behind him, this time I'm gonna grab him by the right shoulder. It's my intention to grab him, turn him around and whamp him one in the face. Shoulder comes in like that. Hey! He's key eyed, he's released the hold. Next move in the catcher is. <coughs> pulls me in, forces me into this short punch. Right, so yeah, again, the dirty attacker comes in from behind and I'm going to take hold of his right shoulder this time. Now, this time, what Sensei Brown's going to do is going to come over with the same technique as Cypher. He's going to go through the form. He's going to be key eyeing down, which is going to release my hold. He's then going to latch onto my hand, firing that short punch. He's then going to continue with the form. As he goes round for the second key eye, that is the point where my arm will break. Hopefully, it doesn't break my arm because we're just practicing. But if you were really good for it in real life, that's the arm breaking technique in this particular move. So I'm going to come on, grab hold here. It hey! Releases that with the key eye, slides down, fires in the short punch, takes it over his head. Hey! And I've gone down at that point. Now, if you had really forced me down there, that motion would have broken my arm, it would have sent it right around my back. Hey! 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 <laughs> Right, so you see the sensei then releasing the hold by coming over with the elbow and firing down to release the hold. Now, another example of that same technique, if I can get Sensei Brown to throw a punch, please, with this arm. So he comes in, a head level punch, please, Sensei. So he comes in with a jaw punch. I'm going to stop it there. Now, with this same technique of taking that circular motion, it could also, if you come in nice and faster, up and down. It's a takedown in itself. I'm going to just demonstrate that again. So it's the same movement where I'm turning my body and I'm coming around and I'm dropping like this. Yet again, jump down level punch comes in, stop that punch there, latch onto the arm, carry the circular motion of going round in and out. Come in again, please, Sensei. Stop, latch, down. One more example, sir, then I'm going to let you get me on that same move. So come in with a jump down punch again, please, Sensei. Up there, stop, round in that motion and down like that. All one big fluid sweep. Right, so we're going to see Sensei Brown doing this same technique. So basically, I'm going to come in with a Jordan punch. He's going to stop it, just like a Jordan Nagayuki. And only he's going to grab, latch onto the arm, use his power in a circular arcing motion, just like what you do with the ki eye. As you turn around, come down with the ki eye. He's going to use that to launch you down to initiate a takedown just by using the single arm. 
Ah! Right, so we've already seen a few examples of how we get through a move spur in 40 and 50. Now, one thing we haven't discussed yet is what's actually happening with the leg. You've seen us going around and taking hands off, you've seen them getting rid of the hair lock, you've seen them getting into the arm breaking position and breaking the arm. But we haven't spoken about what's actually happening with the leg. Notice that the leg comes up as it travels around. Now this could be a quite a number of things. The first and most blatant thing is that it could be blocking a kick. So if I was coming with a front kick, Block straight away, takes my leg off to this side. Now, if we do this and Sensei Brown goes into the full sequence of the form, it can then carry out the, the manoeuvres on top of that and it's going to result in me being in a lot of trouble. So if I come in with a front kick, bang! Thank you, Sensei. You see what he did there? The leg come up to block, but as he come down, instead of just putting it down and stepping on it, he actually put it down and stepped on me. Now, despite him being blind, he knew exactly where he'd put me, so he got me into that position, straight down to the back of my leg, the hand come down, straight onto the shoulder as well, with the leg going and the weight on the shoulder, it were enough to drop it down to the floor. Thank you, Sensei. <laughs> same technique, uh, you've seen it used to get somebody off your head, you've seen it used to avoid a kick, uh, you've seen it used to a few things already. Now another example, it's Sensei Brown takes a firm grab of my right hand shoulder, no matter which hand he gets it with, he's going with his right hand, that's his toughest hand, so he's got a really firm grip. Now in the kata, as this one comes over like this, now already I've got a reaction where he's dipping, I've got my elbow into a nice place here where he's dipping. Now where this comes round near this leg, now notice how it comes round and it catches the bottom of his ankle there. Now when this comes round in full motion, I'm going to do this slow first of all before we do it nice and fast. So as it comes in slow motion, I've got this dipping action here and then the sweep is initiated just by taking that leg there. Right, so also with, them, uh, with this technique in cipher, these moves that we've we'll been looking at. Now from another attacker point of view, you've seen what Sensei Brown has been dealing with an attacker at the front of him and you've also seen him initiate some moves from behind. Now also when the short punch comes out and the arm retracts, if Sensei Brown's not facing me and I happen to be another attacker, I can come up, go with a bear hook clasp on him. As the arm comes back for the short punch, it's a rear elbow strike. Now if it fetches this one back as well, if I haven't got off him yet, I don't want to hold on to too many of them when they keep coming back. So don't forget, you're not just pulling that arm back into a preparation position at the side of the waist. Always it's a rear elbow. Always it's a rear elbow. That's where you get your torque, driving back. You're not just pulling back to your prep position, you're driving that elbow back to the rear. Right, so, so practically at the end of Kata Cypher now, Sensei Brown's just going to demonstrate the last couple of techniques in this Kata. Reverse punch, Sensei. So we're going to take it from the reverse punch. So fire that reverse punch in at me, please. So the punch comes in. I dip down. Now at this point, Sensei Brown takes a firm grasp of my head and begins to twist and step around. Now as he does so, he's fired me out and pulled me back in. And there it is. That's the bunk house for Catacypher, Middle Dojo, Crazy Blind Man, Bolt Polka. What's that?